Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome back. My name is Ricardo Cabrera with the Latino Chamber of Commerce of Boulder County. And today we have our very special guest with us. May Sandberg is from the Outreach and she is the Outreach and Engagement Manager on behalf of all of our research program over at the National Institute of Health. Uh, May has been with us before when she introduced the All of Us program, a research program. Which, and today we're here for a little catch up, a little more information. Uh, so welcome, May. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks, Ricardo, for having me back. It's good to be here and share some new and exciting information about the All of Us Research Program with the Chamber. Excellent. I'm included. So, so guys, as you may know, uh, the country shut down in mid-March of last year. Uh, COVID-19 was here. It was spreading rapidly. And uh, we thought it radiated and it had started in Seattle and New York City. But now we know through new evidence that there is more to the story. And, uh, and it may have started sooner than we thought. So May, tell us a little bit, first of all, tell us a little bit about what the All of Us Research Program is, and then we can go talk about work things. Sure. So the All of Us Research Program is a historical data collection effort that aims to be inclusive of all peoples and all communities that have been underrepresented in biomedical research. The goal is to build a comprehensive database from participant volunteers across the United States to help scientists learn more about how medicine can make it be more effective to each one of us as individuals and taking into account things like our environment, our lifestyle, and our biology. So the program really appreciates everyone's uniqueness, and it is open and a welcoming opportunity for all voices to be heard and matter within the future of medicine. Wow, that's awesome. So tell me, I understand this program is doing some COVID-19 research related stuff as well, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. So the program is involved with a couple of different of COVID-19 research activities. Um, and there's actually three. The first one is antibody testing. And we'll talk a little bit more about why that was so important to what we found out here soon. The second is the electronic health record. So that is a digital version of your medical health record that gives us a lot of information. And the third one is the COPE survey, um, which is really gathering the experience of all of us um, during the pandemic. So it is checking on things on how we were doing physically, emotionally, as well as mentally during the pandemic. Okay, wow, very nice. Um, I learn more and more about this program every time that we talk. So thank you for sharing. Uh, so tell me more about the antibody testing. Yeah, so in June of last year, we reported some findings on a study that we conducted that analyzed 24,000 blood samples from our program participants across all 50 states. And we tested them between March 2nd uh, I'm sorry, January 2nd and March 18 of 2020. So right before the pandemic was really technically hit or was made aware to the general public. And what we learned resulted in a new and very interesting evidence of early COVID-19 infections in the United States. So for example, we detected COVID-19 antibodies using two different serology tests in nine participant samples of those 24,000. What was most interesting is that these participants were from outside those major urban hotspots of like Seattle or New York City, which we believed were the key points of entry of the virus into the US. Um, most of these samples came in as early as January 7th from participants in Illinois, Massachusetts, Mississippi, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. So most positive samples were collected prior to the first reported cases in those states. And what that does is it demonstrates the importance of expanding testing as quickly as possible during an epidemic. Well, wow, that's amazing. And you know, I mean, I can tell you a story of a, of a family member of mine from El Paso, Texas. And yeah. 
she, I mean, the, the short story is that she got sick from a pulmonary disease mm -hmm. in November, October of November of 2019, before we knew COVID existed. And looking back, you know, the symptoms and the way she acted and reacted and passed away very quickly looks like, you know, it was, you know, something similar. It sounds like it's everything we hear about COVID. So I'm amazed that now we know through your research and because of the participants that are helping you in this program that we can look back in history and say, but wait a minute, it wasn't New York, it was Massachusetts. Um, so let me ask you, have, have you or your family been affected by this? Um, and what does this research mean? Yeah, so first of all, I'm so sorry for your family member that got sick and passed away. Um, we hear a lot of stories like this, and stories are really powerful medicine as well, right? There's data, which is what the National Institutes of Health aims to do, but the stories are also really important. And it's not the first time I've heard something similar. Right before um, you know, 2020, so many people, including my family members and people in my community, got really sick. So to, to point out my family, my sister went to Chicago with her infant daughter and husband right around um, December of 2019. And they got really, really sick and also had like an upper respiratory infection. My little niece got pneumonia. So just really, um, really terrible time recovering. And it took them about a month. Now, also within my household, um, my youngest child, um, who's now 11, did get COVID and they were asymptomatic. The only reason we knew or we even tested them is because through the school, um, they let us know that they had been exposed to someone who recently had tested positive. So we were incredulous, like, you know, our kids doing great. They look fine. Um, we had them tested and Ricardo, they were positive for COVID. So then we had to go into lockdown. But it's just really interesting how this disease has tremendously affected some and then others like my daughter who had no symptoms whatsoever. So I think the more that we volunteer to share our information, the more we'll learn later on about truly what COVID is and how it was impacting people. Wow, that's, a, that's an incredible story. And, 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 and I'm sure all of us have heard something like this and, you know, which makes me think, we really don't know very much about this disease. You know, we really know very little about this disease um, and how it affects different people. And, you know, like when really it came into the country and where it landed and, and, uh, and started spreading. Um, so tell me then, uh, you know, I'm knowing, knowing this now that your health record that you're collecting through your volunteers, it's a, it's a window into to the past, right? History into the past. And that would make me participate. That would make me want to participate. But why else, why else would I want to participate in the All of Us Research Program? Well, to be simply put, because you, me, and everyone on this planet, you know, we, we matter to our family and we matter to our community. And maybe you never thought about medical research or, you know, we've never been invited, you know, as Latinos, we used to not be invited to medical research, but now we are. And in this program, 17% are Latinos or Hispanics. So I'm really proud of how that's increasing. Um, or maybe you never even consider it. You know, I think the pandemic has made us all really focus on our health, on our health, right? And I believe now more than ever, we really need to do our part. If it's within our power to risk some vulnerability and overcome some trust, you know, we might be able to help ourselves, our children and our grandchildren. I'm the first person in my family to ever participate in medical research. You know, my family never really talked about our health. We were just people that worked and, you know, we, um, took, you know, we rubbed Vicks on it and we just <laughs> kept going, right? Um, right? We lit a candle, you know, something, um, you know, both sides of my family are really private about their health. But, you know, we as their children, we need to know because when you grow up like I did, and then we have kids, we don't know what to look for in them 
or how to be proactive about our health. You know, some people have had paid, you know, to have their DNA analyzed to learn more about their health, right? Um, but some families don't consider paying for this or they can't afford it. And I love that this program is free. Everything that's learned about your health and my health is shared with us. And again, it's free. So that's really, um, that's really, you know, equitable for everyone. And what we've learned is that, you know, with your own report, you can share this with your family, with your doctor and be proactive about your health. It also legitimizes if you have been suffering from something and maybe your doctor isn't taking you seriously, or maybe you think that, you know, you're overreacting. If you were able to have something that says, yes, you know, based on your DNA, you have a higher propensity for cholesterol or, you know, a certain type of cancer, that would be really powerful to take back to your doctor and be able to work on it together to get in front of it not find out when it's too late. Wow, that sounds amazing. So let me ask you, I have three questions from, uh, from this that, that are pretty awesome. So first of all, is what well known, this is really not a question, but it's well known that research has always been focused on, you know, the majority population, right? So uh, there are a lot of things, medicines are designed from, you know, from this research and yeah. Treatment pro, uh, treatments are designed from this research, and since historically the the BIPOC population in general, right, the the, uh, the African American, Latinos, people of color have always been excluded from this research that creates the medicine that gives us that we take every day. Well, this is really important, and it's our opportunity to give back to the community, if you would. So so uh, so by as as minorities we can give back to the community through this program to help the population at large and the medical industry. So my question is, you mentioned privacy and Hispanics, we are private people, right? We don't, we don't like to tell people uh, things, especially, you know, about, you know, sickness and stuff like that. But this program is private, right? You share your DNA, uh, you can share your DNA, you can participate at many levels, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but one of the options is that you can share your DNA, and this information stays private, right? Nobody's going to know anything except for you and, and the program. Absolutely. So I'm really proud of you, Ricardo, because you remembered from our first conversation that yes, um, most of the medicines that we're taking now were tested on Caucasian males that were healthy. So that means you and me are excluded from that group. And that is a, you know, a mistake that health research did in the past. What we're really trying to do now is make sure that we include every population so that when the medicines are approved or the treatments are considered effective, it really means that it's effective for a bigger group of people, you and me included. Um, also, you know, like the LGBTQI communities, women used to be excluded as well, as well as people with physical and developmental disabilities, or if you were sick. And, you know, most of the United States, you know, we have some sort of chronic something here or there that's genetically passed. We would have been excluded. This program really invites everyone to really represent what the U.S. is so that those advancements make sense. And then to your second point about privacy and confidentiality, oh my gosh, you are not joking, right? We are such private people and we have reason to distrust, right? Um, and what I try to do in this, you know, in a small portion in this program is really focus on explaining your information is private and confidential. We even have certificates of confidentiality with the US government that helps us fight any legal demands to give out information. And in fact, when you participate, you know, when you download the app or you go online to participate, you can see your information, but the researchers can't. Things like your name and your address, phone number, all of that gets taken away. You do have a unique code that you can see your information, but we are very much focused on making sure that we earn back the trust of people so that they can benefit medically. Excellent, that's that's great to know. So it's an honest to goodness uh, double blind study, they call that, because nobody yes. knows who you are and, right. and they may see your DNA results, but they don't know anything about 
who you are or any identifier. So, so it's totally private and it's free. So I, uh, I like the fact that you, you can get a professional high end result uh, study, medical study that's usually very expensive at no cost to yourself. So, uh, well, tell me then, uh, how can I join and maybe a little bit more about the program because we haven't really talked about the program itself, right? Because there's levels, yeah. there's an app, um, you know, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so we try to make it convenient and we try to make it inclusive. Right now, all of our information is available in English as well as in Espanol. So you can visit our website and you can see all the information in English and Spanish. We are working on adding additional languages because we want to make sure, again, that we're inclusive of everyone. Mm -hmm. So there's two ways to join. You can go to the joinallofus.org forward slash connect site and you can join there, or if you're like me and you always have your phone with me, you can also go to the Google Play or Apple App Store and download the All of Us Research app that's created by Care Evolution with the all white background. The, the whole process is really interactive and informative. There's a few videos because, you know, medical research and all those disclosures can sometimes be, you know, they're comprehensive. So we're trying to make sure that everyone makes an informed decision. And something that I really like about the program is, like you mentioned early, earlier, it's customizable. You don't have to share your DNA if you don't yet feel comfortable with that. You can say no, or you can choose to come back later and um, you know, decide to join then. You can share as little you know, just answer surveys, give us some information about yourself and your background, all the way up to, you know, um, providing your DNA so that when we're ready to run your DNA, we can provide you with a full gamut of a genetic turnaround. And it might come out in chunks, but we also provide you with a free counselor, a genetic counselor to help you interpret that. So going to the website or downloading the app, are two excellent ways to learn more. So if you're curious to wanna to know more after um, you know, your members watch this, they can go to the website or download the app and see more, or you can sign up and you know, go all the way to be able to get your DNA results for free. Well, that's awesome. And just so you all know, I'm gonna put all this information down here as well in the description. So you'll have links and access to this great research program. And uh, just last time we spoke, uh, just so you all know, I did go up and sign up for the All of Us Research Program, uh, but I didn't go as far as the DNA. But after today, I'm getting more comfortable uh, with doing that, especially because everything you get back. So you you are going to get back a counselor, some results, and uh, and you may be able to prepare now for the future, especially in medical things. And rather than being blindsided with you know high cholesterol in ten years. Uh, you may just uh, learn something today and do something about it now. Yeah, that's really what we're trying to do is make sure that everyone has equal equitable access to these types of advancements and things will change. You know, the program is meant to last 10 years until 2028, but we're hoping that with enough people that participate, we can make it last even longer. Mm -hmm. Imagine what the advancements will be in 2028. I mean, I think of all that we've done this year, or last year and this year with COVID where we really used everything that was kind of taking a slow pace. And then I just think of how brave and how you know, committed scientists were to make sure that they could do everything they could to help save us, right? Provide us with those, those, infer those resources and tools. So I'm just really hopeful that everyone considers at least learning more about it and sharing it with others so that I've done my job to make sure to let our community, Nuestra Comunidad, know that that is out there and that they are welcome. Excellent. Well, May, thank you so very much for sharing all this great information with us. Uh, thank you everybody for sticking around. And remember, it is a research program where we can help the community and we get a little back as well. So uh, thank you again, May. And, uh, and I have a surprise question for you. I almost forgot my surprise question for you, May. Are you oh, ready? No. Yes, of course. All right. So what is your favorite sound or noise? Mm, 
That's a really good question. I think the my favorite sound or noise would be my Buddha, my Buddhist chimes, like my wind chimes uh -huh. that are outside. Sometimes like the really long ones make a big noise. And yeah. the Buddhist chimes are just like, they look like little half circles and they're really light. Um, it reminds me of like warm summer days. So that, that must be um, my favorite sound and, or hearing my cat purr. <laughs> <laughs> we all love that too. So with that, thanks again, May, and until next time. All right. Thank you, Ricardo.